Sooner Murley and Campbell on row one. Pearson and D. Orlando on row number two. It will be Denmark and Colbecker, row number three. Brooks and Green, row four. Rowe and Siegel, row five. And ladies and gentlemen, it is time to start the 2021 Road to Indy presented by Cooper Tire season two by two. Drivers working their way out onto the front straightaway. And we are green, green, green. Sooner Murley with a good start so far down into turn number one. He takes the inside line. You just want the drivers to get cleanly through turn number one to start the season. Looking good so far through one and two. First time they cruise through the Alabama roller coaster. The elevation change in that particular corner is significant. Big run down to the downhill turn number five. Sooner remember these guys to the early lead. Colbecker trying to push to the outside to go to P5. They go two, almost three wide into five. Good clean start thus far. A couple drivers making contact further back in the field. They're trying to get back up on the throttle, working their way down the back straightaway here, at least this, the secondary straightaway. This particular racetrack winds back on itself. There's a number of straights from 17 to 1, from 3 to 5, 6 to 8, and then, of course, all the way down the back straightaway with a couple of tight, a uh, couple of like, very, very quick switchbacks. 10 11 now, you've been soon to remember the end of the lead in that number 22 machine. Prescott Campbell sliding and sliding right in second. That's exactly what these front row starters wanted to do. Get clean, get through, and build that early gap. And they've got that right now. Yuvin Sunder Murthy into his third season in the program. Sunder Murthy out of Delafield, Wisconsin. Oconomowoc was actually his uh, where he was born, where he lived, and that's actually the hometown of his team, which is Paps Racing. So... A good connection there. You've been tested for a number of different teams in the offseason. Elected to come back to the operation that he spent the last year with. And USF 2000 settling in nicely here early. Again, a big welcome to everyone who's tuning in here on the Road to Indy TV app, on Road to Indy.tv or USF2000.com. Tremendous to get this season underway. One driver, a couple drivers slowing further back, like we might have had some contact deeper in the field. I'll try to pick those drivers up here. Yellow, yeah, we got full course yellow. I think we have a couple drivers potentially off in turn number three. Full course yellow, the 34, and oh, Miles Rowe's involved as well. Miles Rowe in the 99 was involved, as was the 34 of Dylan Christie. So that was more of a, a top 10 mid pack kind of deal. Miles Rowe's actually driven right off the racetrack. He's knocked the front wing off of that, as the drivers you can see working past the Barber Vintage Museum coming out of turn uh, number eight and nine. I think something happened over in turn number two and three through the Alabama roller coaster. I think that's potentially where the contact was. But full course yellow early. We had a really good start, and Yuvin Sunder Murthy able to get the lead, and Prescott Campbell slotting in right behind him. So indeed, interesting start to get things underway here. Not sure. I don't think we have replays available here this morning, so we'll just do what we have with the, with the coverage we have here. Of course, the everyone from the, the IMSP still rolling in. The IndyCar team's uh, coming into the paddock here early in the morning as well. We were all kind of rolling in here at about 6.30 this morning. So a, a quick stoppage. Hopefully it's not going to be too long. We know we had the issue for Miles Rowe. As I said, he went off the track down in five as well after rolling down there with no front wing. So here's your top 10 on the opening lap. Yuvin Sunder Murthy, P1. Prescott Campbell, second. Josh Pearson, third. Michael D. Orlando, fourth. Jace Denmark, fifth. Christian Brooks up to sixth. Spike Colbecker in seventh. Josh Green, eighth. Billy Fraser, ninth. And Jackson Lee now up into the top 10. Kiko Porter running in 11th. Miles Rowe will fall to the tail of the field, as we know. We'll wait for live timing to reset when they come back around. Yeah, you can see the shot here from just the outside of turn number three. We do have a wrecker with the other driver involved. Someone off into the beach. 
as well in turn number nine. That's Rowe. That's Miles Rowe in the, in the black and red Force Indy machine. He's gone off the racetrack in the gravel, so the AMR safety team's got to pull Miles Rowe out of that. That's the 8-9 combination that leads onto the back straightaway. They pound the curb coming through there. I, I got to think Miles has got some suspension damage, too, the front suspension damage, not only just the front wing, because when he came down into turn number five, he wasn't able to get through that corner either and went off into the grass, and the same thing happening coming through eight and nine. So obviously some, some level of suspension damage there. Dylan Christie we know involved as well. When the drivers come back around, we'll figure out what's going on here. So not really the start we wanted. We would like to have gone green to checker in the opening lap or opening race of the season, but full course coming out for an incident on the opening circuit. Again, once they come back around, we'll figure out who's involved. I'm going to say Miles Rowe, Dylan Christie, and potentially Matt Round Garrido as well. Uh, he has not posted his second lap while here on live timing, and I don't see him down on pit lane at all. AMR safety team doing a little cleanup on the front straightaway as well. I think couple of drivers potentially cutting the grass coming out of uh, 17. So we'll do at least another lap here onto the yellow sooner or early, getting a really good start. And kudos to Yuvin because I said first ever front row start. And anybody who's ever raced anything, uh, whatever it may be, when you're starting on the front row, the nerves are there, especially the, the very first time when you just want to make sure you get through cleanly. And the opening corner here at Barber's Tough. It's a downhill braking zone. The compression as you get to the bottom, you got to get run off the outside of the racetrack a bit, back up the hill to turn number two. You kind of open up the corner a bit to be able to get through cleanly. That opens the door for drivers to come in. Nonetheless, good start for you. And one driver falling deeper in the field who started up a little further was Eli Navarro for D-Force Racing. He's now down to the tail of the field in 23rd. But yeah, indeed, a number of drivers involved in that one. They're going to try to get that cleanup done over in turn number one. Christian Brooks able to get one pass on that opening circuit. He started in sixth and was able to go into seventh. Billy Fraser up three spots, started 12th. The uh, New Zealand Formula Ford champion and a driver who Ran last year in the Toyota Racing Series, one of the partners of the Road to Indy presented by Cooper Tires. He's up three spots. I want to say Jackson Lee up a couple positions as well. Yeah, Jackson started 14th. He goes into 10th. So a good start for Jackson Lee on the opening circuit for Jay Howard Driver Development as he works his way now up into the top 10. Sooner Murthy and Campbell doing a tremendous job, though, getting through cleanly in the opening circuit. Josh Pearson as well. Pearson just 15 years of age. Josh uh, out of Wilsonville, Oregon. TransUnion and Iovation sponsors on the race car. Of course, give an opportunity to shout out some of the sponsors here. ST Motorsports for Yuvin Sundar Amurthy. Prescott Campbell, Fluid Logic, and the Valkyrie Intelligence. Newport Beach, California, the hometown, but he calls his residence Oxford, the UK, because he goes to school in the UK. Very intelligent young man, Prescott Campbell. Just a really good feel this year. All right, watch. Yeah, I'm seeing the number 92 of Matt Brown Garrido coming in. They got the that car fully wrapped. So there's obviously some kind of uh, an oil leak or a fluid leak out of the car of Matt Brown Garrido. Not a good start. Uh, a late announcement that he would join the exclusive autosport team this weekend, I believe next weekend in St. Petersburg as well. That's uh, that's like looks like some significant damage to the number 92 Tadis USF 17. So that team will have to go to work. Remember, US uh, USF 2000 back on the racetrack today. They'll go green again at 3:50 this afternoon. So that team's got a lot of time, still about six or seven hours to get the car fixed, but a little more work than they expected for exclusive autosport on that car. Looking like we're getting close to cleaning back up the AMR safety team. Again, the issue with the car, obviously the damage and the fluid leakage is going to make it a little more of a cleanup. We've got the cars, I think, pretty much handled. They'll have uh, 
his car back to the paddock momentarily, but they're still having to clean up. We did that uh, sweep on the front straightaway as well. We got a bunch of grass on the front straight, I think. AMR safety team looked like they're potentially just starting to leave the scene now over in turn number three. So that'll give us a chance to get back at it. Those of you tuning in here right now, we'll dial you in on what we got going on this afternoon and, and earlier this morning. We have an 11-10 green flag for the first of two races for Indy Pro 2000, the Grand Prix of Alabama, presented by Cooper Tires. We'll roll uh, again just before the noon hour. Uh, looking forward to that, uh, the 11-10. And then Indy Lights will fire things up for the first time. 13 cars in the Indy Lights presented by Cooper Tire Series this year. A lot of excitement, a lot of buzz at the paddock. Not just the fact that we got 13 cars, but also with the level of competition. There's probably a good seven or eight drivers that can win races here this year. This is going to be a lot of fun to watch. Uh, of course, uh, that event, uh, if you're not here trackside, you can follow that on the NBC Peacock app in Canada on Rev TV and internationally on the YouTube channel of The Race. Lots of opportunities to be able to watch the broadcast. The show on The Race will be using the IndyCar radio audio. The whole crew from IndyCar radio here trackside as well. That race set to go. Start your engines at about 12.10 this afternoon for Indy Lights. Linus Lundquist on the pole for race number one. His teammate David Malukas on the pole for race two. Speaking of race two, Nolan Siegel, who runs 12th right now here in USF 2000 off the green flag, will start on the pole for race number two this afternoon, the D-Force driver. So interesting, in all six races that we had, six different pole sitters. And indeed, even sooner, we're really being uh, told one lap to go. We'll go green next time by. 20 lap is the run here. 40 minutes the time limit. We've got about 29 minutes remaining and 16 laps. I think if we, if we go clean, we'll be able to get the remainder of this race done. But it looked to me like we didn't see a replay, obviously, but contact, I would say, between Miles Rowe and Dylan Christie. I believe they started fairly close together on the racetrack. Miles Rowe starting in the ninth position. No, Christie was actually back at 19th. So with contact with Dylan Christie and then further back starting 25th, Matt Round Garrido, you have to believe that maybe something happened with another driver. Rowe likely spun and then was collected by those drivers coming through, and we had a bit of a, uh, a traffic jam there. But indeed, six different pole sitters, which is pretty exciting in the program. Even Sundar Murthy and Nolan Siegel get the poles in USF 2000. Braden Eves, part of an exclusive Autosport front row lockout in race one for Indy Pro 2000. USF 2000 reigning champion Christian Rasmussen scoring the pole in race number two for uh, Indy Pro 2000 for Che Howard Driver Development. Then, as I said, the HMD Motorsports and Global Racing Group crew of Linus Lundquist and David Malukas getting the poles for uh, Indy Lights. So again, Eubin Sundar Murthy will bring him around here with Prescott Campbell right behind him, Josh Pearson P3, Michael D. Orlando fourth, Chase Denmark Gessel in fifth, and Christian Brooks in the sixth spot, Spike Kolbecker seventh, Josh Green eighth, Billy Fraser ninth, and Jackson Lee lining up in tenth as they get set to come back at it here. When they come to the line, it'll be lap six, 14 laps remaining. Sundar Murthy handled his first start, now ready to handle his first restart. He punches off, we're back to green. Let's see what kind of a challenge we get early. De Orlando trying to find a way by Pearson, looking to the outside, tucks back in. Name of the game for guys further back in the field, the rookies, just get the seat time, get as many laps as you can, finish these races. You'll get better and better as the season goes on. Again, back through the Alabama roller coaster and Sooner Murthy running the defensive line down the bottom of the racetrack into turn five. That's gonna give a chance for Prescott Campbell to get a huge run out of the corner. Surprised to see the early defensive move down the inside for Eubin Sundar Murthy. Campbell right with him. Campbell looking to the outside, coming into eight and nine. Prescott wants to lead this. Campbell right there with him. Everybody else lining up to begin the charge for the remaining 14 laps of this 20 lapper for USF 2000, the first rung of the road to Indy. All these drivers trying to get that scholarship check at the end of the season. 
to be able to make the move to Indy Pro 2000 in 2022. And that field of 17 cars this year, expecting to jump up to maybe 20 next season. A lot of interest in Indy Pro 2000. We've got new tubs coming next year as well with a halo type device for both USF 2000 and Indy Pro. So we'll have full halo type device uh, safety added to the cars for 2022. Watching the action here now. Billy Fraser able to get another spot. Here comes Dylan Christie back out on the, actually Dylan Christie, I wonder if he's serving a drive through penalty because Christie coming in here down to pit lane. Sundar Amurthy still leading. Fraser though, as I said, able to get by Spike Kolbecker. So I'll move Billy Fraser. Kolbecker now having a really hard dice with Fraser as they come out of turn number five. Yeah, those drivers really dicing it out. Here's the shot coming down out of turn six. There's eight and nine. Over top of the curb coming through, then trying to get that car rotated and back on the power quickly because that's that long straightaway then through the very quick. That's it there. Turn 10 and 11. Then the straightaway down to 12 and 13, which is a crucial part of this racetrack. You see the downhill run back up over the rise between 13 and 14. And then it's a big uphill run to 15, 16. And then the final corner, the left hand turn 17 that leads back onto the straightaway. There's a great shot of that there. There's 16, then 17. Back onto the front chute. You can see the elevation change there. The driver's coming back down the hill and onto the front track. Driver goes four wheels off. That was the number 23 of Jace Denmark on the outside of turn number 17. And we've seen that happen time and time again. You try to roll so much speed through 17 to get that good run down to one. And if you just lose it a bit, get onto those rumbles on the outside, you're cutting grass. And he was all the way off the racetrack. Denmark's going to lose a bunch of positions. Yeah, he's falling behind Cole Becker. So he was, uh, I, I believe, seven. Actually, he was fifth coming across. It moves Brooks and Fraser to sixth, fifth and sixth. Denmark falls actually down to eighth position now with that mistake. Watching the battle a little further back here. Andre Castro, Evan Stommer, and Eli Navarro having some good runs. Here's the drivers working their way down the back chute. Coming to the midway point of this USF 2000 event. Opening round, I'll tell you, every driver coach, every team owner, manager telling their drivers, listen, let's make sure we finish these races. Yeah, we'd love to have fantastic results, but finishing races is key, especially at the start of the season and especially for the rookie drivers here in their first season of road indy competition. You're just trying to get seat time. You're trying to you're getting through your first start, your first restart. You want to get through your first race distance. All these things, these boxes that these drivers will check here at Barber Motorsports Park. Then they go to the street circuit next week at St. Petersburg with just a totally different mindset, having gotten through those firsts. You've been sooner or early trying to get the first win. That would be a check that he'd like to make on the career list. There's the number 20 of Simon Sykes as well. Leaders working their way through turns number five. Josh Pearson right there as well. And Paps Racing has been strong. They run first and third. Sooner Murthy in the 22, Pearson in the 24. D. Orlando by himself now in fourth. Christian Brooks fifth, Billy Fraser sixth. Little puff of smoke there, driver locking it up, coming through turn number eight and nine. Drivers have settled into the groove now, getting the rhythm of the racetrack. 55 degrees trackside when we got here. I don't think we're going to see some super high temps. They're talking about potentially getting as high as 68 degrees later on in the day. We're 57. And one of the things about Barber Motorsports Park, this track, so unbelievably temperature sensitive, depending on the morning, afternoon, whatever it may be, track's going to change. Grip level's going to be a lot different. And that's uh, that kind of puts the onus on the engineers to make that right call. Let's look at some lap times right now. 121.8. For even sooner, Murthy, the only driver in the 121s is the leader. Half a second advantage now. Josh Pearson trying to roll up on Prescott Campbell. Those two drivers were, were teammates last year at Exclusive Autosport. 
And I'll tell you, Christian Brooks has closed up on Michael D. Orlando as well. Over a tenth quicker last time by. Christian Brooks putting in the time here just at the halfway point of this race. Still ten laps to go, and Brooks starting to close up. That's them right there coming down through eight and nine. Christian Brooks right up on the gearbox now of Michael D. Orlando. They finished fourth and fifth, respectively, last year in the championship. And I got a feeling we're going to see a battle here. Turn five, the best place to make the pass. So really, Brooks just trying to close up enough that he can potentially get the job done down in five. A lot of the overtaking, I think, here at Barber Motorsports Park comes with the pressure that a driver can put on another driver. You've got to force him into making a mistake. Fill those mirrors. Show the nose here and there. That's when you can make potentially make something happen. Further back, we're also lining up behind Billy Fraser. Fraser runs in six. Spike Kohlbecker, seventh. Jace Denmark's closed up in eighth. Then it's Josh Green in ninth. And Kiko Porto, tenth. Trey Burke has worked his way up to 18th. Started dead last in 26. He's 18th. Good run here for Trey Burke again. We'll talk a lot about Trey this year, but here's a guy that has come to us, not through karting, not through Formula Ford, but through 360 and 410 sprint cars. This guy can hustle a sprint car around, and he is learning every lap. Good battle here between Kent Vaccaro in the number 16 and Evan Stommer as well in the Cape Motorsports machine. Stommer in that number three. They've got Eli Navarro right behind him. That is the scrap for, uh, I think, 20, 21, and 22, and they're getting at it. Pearson just turned a pretty good lap as well. Top three drivers all under the 21s. There's your front-running trio there. Look how quick that corner is, turn number 10 and 11. Just a flick of the wheel. You don't need much steering input going through that corner, but you got to have confidence in the race car because it's turning it right in. Here's the battle for P4. That's what I'm talking about. This is the scrap between Michael Orlando in the four and Christian Brooks in the 44. Brooks lost a little ground that last lap. Fraser's pulled some gap as well on Spike Kohlbecker. Trying to pick up some of the battles that come by me here at start finish. So three drivers out early. Miles Rowe and Matt Round Garrido. Dylan Christie able to get back out onto the racetrack. He's only had six laps, as has P Peter Vadanovich for Jay Howard Driver Development. Not sure what happened to Peter. Don't know that those drivers are on track. I think that Christie may be still running. Vadanovich went off course. But I think I believe Dylan Christie may still be on track. I'll try to pick him back up as I can. But you even sooner Murley doing what he's got to do right now. Yeah, indeed. There's I just, just seeing the 34 Christie in front of me. So he is still on the racetrack. Good for him. Get some lap times. But sooner Murley trying to get that first victory. That's that battle there for fourth and fifth. Brooks not that close at this point. Nolan Siegel, who will start uh, pole in race number two, now running in 11th spot. That's kind of flipping things around. One of the issues as well, well, three sets of tires for five sessions today. A number of people sat out the opening session. We've done so much testing here at Barber. You never know who has saved a set of tires for whatever race. I have a feeling that potentially if they put a fresh set of tires on for Juven, for this particular race. He qualified P15 for race number two. So Eubin's going to be deep in the field uh, in the back of the, essentially the second half of the, the field for race two, but he's trying to get that opening win to start the season. Ah, uh, cameras, more cameras coming on board for us here as the guys are getting rolling. Love that camera on the inside of turn number five. Got a good shot of the drivers rotating through that corner. Out of six, down to seven. Sunder Murthy's lead, six tenths of a second over Prescott Campbell. But look at Josh Pearson putting a ton of pressure on Campbell. Now that's the fight. There's the fight for second. That's Josh Pearson and Prescott Campbell. They were teammates last year, rivals here in 2021. Pearson putting a lot of pressure on him. Tremendous racing. Let's see what Pearson does. 15 years of age. What's the team saying in the radio? Are they saying 
Hold your spot. Let's get a P3. Are they, uh, or is he green lighted? Go after it. Maybe go for the race win here. We'll see. Only a second year in the series, 14 years of age last year. Watched him come up through the karting ranks, running with uh, one of the strongest teams in the sport out of Oregon, Rawlison Performance Group. A raw rookie last year and was honed working with the crew over at Exclusive Autosports. Uh, a lot of the times in the sport, you'll see drivers come in with one team and then press, maybe want to press the reset button. They test with a bunch of different teams in the off season, try something different. Depending on the driver, sometimes that's a good thing. Throw them into a different pool, a different experience, a, a different group of people. Sometimes you'll see a lot of benefit when a driver stays with a team for multiple years, getting, getting into the comfort zone and, and a place they can grow. All depends on the drivers, a little bit different here and there. Sundar Murthy's lead, 1.5 seconds right now. I think that he's benefiting from the fact that Prescott Campbell probably driving in the mirrors a little bit. He knows uh, that... Uh, but Josh Pearson's there and trying to find a way by. Ooh, that's uh, fourth, fifth, and sixth. The Orlando, Brooks, and Fraser. Shout out to Billy Fraser as well. Top rookie on the racetrack right now. Rookies running sixth, seventh, and eighth. Billy Fraser, Spike Colbecker, and Jace Denmark. But Billy Fraser, 2020 New Zealand Formula Ford champion. Tremendous season down in that program. And he is, uh, he's dialing things in here now. Right behind his teammate. Fraser actually with the colors of Cambridge Global Payments. That was a sponsorship that was announced this week. Cambridge logo and the colors on Billy Fraser's car. The logo on Braden Eves, who will start pole later today in Indy Pro 2000. D-Force drivers Kiko Porto and Nolan Siegel run a nose to tail. That's 10th and 11th. Lap starting to wind down here, though. Five to go. Eubens Sooner Murthy coming back for another season, his third year in the series, and looking to break through and get that victory. And I'll tell you this, seen it time and time again. When a driver gets that first win, the floodgates open. The pressure is off. They get the confidence knowing that they can be on the top step of the podium. And we usually see other wins coming. It'll be tougher for Eubens tomorrow. I don't, I don't know that he's going to do it this afternoon. Not tomorrow, this afternoon. Again, we go green this afternoon for USF 2350. He's starting 15th deep in the field. So if he's able to get into the top 10 with the speed he's showing, I think that would be a successful run for Eubin. But he's leading right now, trying to get that first victory. Christian Brooks closing back up again on Michael D. Orlando this last time by. Both drivers running 22 flats. Let's see if he's close enough to try to make a move coming down into turn number five this time. He is not. Still about four car lengths back and almost equidistance back to his teammate, Billy Fraser. Drivers rolling through turn number one near the tail of the field to cap off the group coming through. Back there under the Alabama roller coaster here. That's that scrap I said between Eli Navarro, Evan Stammer, and I believe Andre Castro. No, that's Trey Burke in that fight as well. Turn five here at Barber Motorsports Park, the downhill braking zone, left-hand hairpin, tough part of this racetrack. Twelve and thirteen. Back up over the rise. We saw a number of drivers have trouble there. Go off. You can see the compression as they get through that corner and get that car to rotate while still understanding that that's, that the suspension is going to be compressed down nicely coming through there and then kind of shoots out of that corner. Out of 17, back down the front straight. There's Eubens Sooner and Murthy. Campbell, Pearson, and here's the battle fourth, fifth, and sixth. The Orlando, Brooks, and Fraser. Spike Kohlbecker following P7, having a good run. Kohlbecker with the new Ignite Autosport program that is running with Dominic and Nicholas Cape, Cape Motorsports. Ignite Autosport's going to be a cool program, hooking up with Margay Racing, the leading American chassis manufacturer for karting. They have a Margay Ignite program, which is a spec karting program that had really taken the grassroots level of karting by storm, and it's been fantastic. Oh, I think we got a battle here right now. Let's come back to this fight for P4. Look at this. Christian Brooks side-by-side -side with D. Orlando coming up to turn number eight. Brooks is trying the outside. How's this going to end? Brooks to the outside. Not quite able to get it done. So close, Christian Brooks. That's brought Billy Fraser back into the fight. Brooks trying to throw everything at D. Orlando with a couple laps to go here. 
all over him. Brooks hounding the Orlando, trying to force that hit mistake. Right up on the gearbox. The key is getting close enough coming out of the Alabama roller coaster to be able to get it in five. That's the battle right there for P4. Fourth, fifth, and sixth. The Orlando for Cape. And then the two exclusive drivers, Brooks and Fraser. <laughs> awesome racing. I'll tell you, the Orlando pretty good coming out of 17. And he's able to take that gap. Look how bigger that much bigger that gap is. Probably six car lengths now. Just about getting through that clean. Oh, a little wide on the exit there. Uh, turn three. Does that potentially hamper him? Fraser closing up on Brooks. But I can't see Billy Fraser trying anything too over aggressive right now on his teammate Christian Brooks. Fraser new to the team, of course, coming in here, did some testing. Six to be a tremendous result for Billy Fraser coming out of the gate as a rookie. I've always said this, the rookie drivers normally start to show midway through the season. We usually point to Road America in late June as being that race where the rookies have had a couple of races in the books. They're more comfortable, they're ready to battle. Early in the season, normally maybe a little more tentative, trying to learn more about it, but we've got a couple of rookies here in the top 10 already. Billy Fraser, Spike Kohlbecker, Jace Denmark. Top 10 here in their opening run. Bring those, bring those results home. Check the box and call it a success to start the day. You can come back again in the afternoon. Oh, look at this. Brooks trying a couple of different lines. White flag flying this time by for Yuvin Sooner Amorthy as he's looking to try to get his first race win. Big lead for Sooner Amorthy, but we got a fight potentially for P4. Prescott Campbell holding on to second, Josh Pearson third. I think the only drivers finished on the podium of those three drivers is Prescott Campbell. He was on the podium last year at New Jersey Motorsports Park, so both uh, Yuvin and Josh be their first opportunity in the podium. Brooks looking deep on the brakes. See if he can't find a way by D. Orlando. Spike Kohlbecker starting to close up there as well. But Sooner Murthy looking to get at it here. Sooner Murthy out of the turn 8 9 complex, past the museum. And this is when you're just trying to stay focused on hitting your marks. You've got a good lead, hit those marks. Be clean. Maybe give yourself a little more room here and there. The lead is enough. Out of 14 and 15. What a way to start the season for the young driver out of Delafield, Wisconsin. Out of 17, his first ever victory in the Cooper Tires USF 2000 Championship. Yuvin Sooner Murthy will win in Birmingham. Prescott Campbell coming home second. Josh Pearson third. Michael D. Orlando fourth. Christian Brooks fifth. Sixth is Billy Fraser. Seventh, Spike Kohlbecker. Eighth, Jace Denmark. Ninth, Josh Green. And tenth is Kiko Porto. I'll tell you, for Yuvin Sooner Murthy to be able to get the job done there, that is crucial. For any driver like that, you have that stress. You have that pressure that you put on yourself. Can I do this? Some issues for Yuvin last year, a minor miscue at the uh, first round of our finale last year at St. Petersburg, overcooked the entry into turn number one on the start, and drove over top of a couple of drivers. That, that beat him up in a big way. But I'll tell you this, uh, to be able to come back here and do what he did and to get a victory here to start the season, that is going to be massive for the confidence of the young American driver for Paps Racing. Yuvin Sooner, Murthy, the victory, 2.332 seconds. Prescott Campbell ends up in second. Josh Pearson, third. Michael D. Orlando, fourth. And the exclusive Autosport drivers, Christian Brooks in fifth. And Billy Fraser in sixth. Top rookie driver outgunning Spike Kohlbecker and Chase Denmark. Three rookies in the top ten. Billy Fraser has to be very, very pleased with a strong run to sixth here. There's your top ten, folks. Sooner Murthy with the win. Campbell second. Pearson third. Just 15 years of age for Josh Pearson. D. Orlando in fourth spot. Brooks fifth. Fraser sixth, Colebecker seventh, Jace Denmark the rookie in eighth, Josh Green ninth, and Kiko Porto rounding out the top ten. Number of different teams there as well. Pabst, D-Force, Cape, Exclusive, Turn 3, 
and D and uh, yeah, D Force again. So wow, a, a number of different teams in the top uh, ten. Congratulations to them. Tremendous day, and of course, where do we go now? We head to Victory Lane because Yuvan Sooner Murthy, Prescott Campbell, and Josh Pearson will join me there to celebrate their victories. Well, once again, a great job. Thank you, Rob. That was a great race. We're going to, Rob, headed off to Victory Lane. And good morning. Welcome to Barber Motorsports Park. What a way to kick off the day, ladies and gentlemen, with the Cooper USF 2000 race. And every time he said that uh, Josh was uh, 15 years old, I, I kind of, you do that. Uh, Josh Pearson, you do that, my goodness, what, a, what an accomplishment. He had a great race, and uh, certainly congratulations to uh, Yunin for his race, and they're uh, surrounding him down there on the uh, pit road. So we've got a lot of excitement. Up, coming up next, we're going to be uh, doing the, having our uh, first race of the Porsche Sprint Challenge, Sean and I think Brittany are going to join us here in about 15 minutes. We're set to go at uh, at um, a little bit uh, at 8:55, so a little bit more than that. But we'll uh, we'll get things rolling. That's race number one for that. That'll be followed by the uh, our first look at the stars of the weekend, the NTT IndyCar Series cars that'll be running in tomorrow's. Uh, NTT IndyCar Series Grand Prix, Honda Grand Prix of Alabama, presented by Amherst, and uh, that's going to be exciting to get to see all those guys for the first time this season out on track and may trying to uh, get ready for qualifying this afternoon uh, here at the Barber Motorsports Pack track. Uh, we do have a, we've got uh, two, three, four races, more races today. We will have the, uh, as we said, coming up shortly is the Porsche Sprint Challenge race number one. We have the Indy Pro 2000 race number one at uh, scheduled for just after 11. After 12, we have the Indy Lights race. And then uh, we have another practice for the NTT IndyCar Series, followed by the final race of the weekend for the Radical Cup Series at uh, 2.50. And then a second race for the folks you just saw, the USF 2000. That'll be at 3.50 this afternoon, and that'll be followed by the NTT IndyCar Series qualifying. The Firestone Fast 6, that's set to go just before 5 o'clock. Well, folks, don't forget, you are here at the most beautiful racetrack in America, the Barber Motorsports Park, home to a wonderful, wonderful race course. And uh, hopefully Sean has found out how many lawnmowers it takes to cut the, uh, how they have <laughs> to keep this place as beautiful as it is. But while you're here, be sure to visit the Barber Vintage Motorsports Museum. We have extended race weekend hours. They're from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. through Sunday. Check out the new expansion, tons of new exhibits and the restoration level, which is open to the public. Now that doesn't happen very often, but it's open to the public all weekend. So make your way over to the museum. And we're going to go down to Victory Lane and Rob Houghton. Thank you so much, Rick. Indeed, we are back at it down here for our first shot into the Tata's Victory Lane. Again, got the top three drivers in here right now, so we are getting set to go. Little feedback there. Sorry, I got to figure out exactly where to stand here. So folks, let's get things underway right now with the drivers who finished on the podium to start off our season. Finishing in third place in today's USF 2000 opener from Pabst Racing, Josh Pearson. 15 years of age, second year in the series. Great job for Josh coming home P3 today. Put the pressure hard on the driver coming home in second. Finishing P2, a great run for D-Force Racing, Prescott Campbell. Good start of the season for both Josh and Prescott. 
But now it's time to reward the driver who was able to get the job done, qualified on the pole position. His first ever start from pole, then a restart as the leader. What a tremendous day for him, kicking off the 21, 2021 season with his first career USF 2000 victory from Paps Racing. Put your hands together for Yuvan Sundaramurthy! Big victory for Yuvan and huge for the confidence, the momentum going into St. Petersburg next weekend. He'll be back at it this afternoon, as will all the other USF 2000 drivers as well. But a big one here for Yuvan. Any young driver to get that first win in the books just changes the way you look at every future event. We've seen so many drivers, kind of opens up the floodgates, and I expect to see Yuvan battling for the championship now, getting out of the gate strongly. But tremendous to see these sophomore drivers roll up behind him as well. Third year for Yuvin in the program, but Prescott Campbell and Josh Pearson, teammates last year, are going to be bitter rivals here in 2021 because both these drivers looking very good to kick off the season. So there you have it, folks, our first Tadis victory lane of the year, the Cooper, Cooper Tires USF 2000 Championship. They'll be back at it this afternoon once again later today, but we also have an Indy Pro 2000 and an Indy Lights race for you here today. Thank you so much for being here. What a great day it is and a fantastic way to start the season. Yuvan Sooner Murthy, the first win in USF 2000.